Let's talk about the second shifting theorem. The first shifting theorem is a little bit easier. If we looked at the Laplace transform of 1, we see that's equal to 1 over s. However, if I change the 1 over s to 1 over s plus a, that is a shift in s, which results in an e to the negative t a t in the time domain. The nice thing about the first shifting theorem is both of these are on the Laplace transform table that I'm going to give you on the exam, so you don't really have to memorize this. You just need to be able to recognize that if I add or subtract something to my s in the s domain, what happens is in the time domain, that's the same thing as having an e to the negative a t. The second shifting theorem works in a similar way, except there's an extra complication with this unit step function, or the heavy side function. Let's look again at the table where it says the Laplace transform of some constant, in this case I'm going to use 1, is equal to that constant divided by s, or 1 divided by s. Another item on your table is the Laplace transform of u of t minus a. Now I'm going to rewrite this as u of t minus a times 1. The reason why I've done this is I want to make it explicitly clear that as before the Laplace transform of 1 is just 1 over s. But what we have is a shift in time. And just like before, a shift in s caused an e to the negative a t in the time domain. What happens when I shift in the time domain is an e to the negative a s in the s domain, in the Laplace domain. Notice in this case the shift in time is t minus a and the resulting exponent in the s domain is e to the negative a s. That's different than what happens when we use the first shifting theorem. I have an e to the negative a t but then it's a s plus a in the s domain. Again you don't have to memorize which is which because both of these two and these two Laplace transforms are on your table, so you can always refer to that, which is exactly what I do, to remember whether or not there's a negative sign there. So let's look at something a little bit more complicated than the number 1. Here I have the heavy side function u of t minus 1 multiplying by a sine of t minus 1. What makes this easier is the shift is the same in both the u and the sine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just focus on the Laplace transform of sine of t. But I'm going to make a note to myself that t went from t to t minus 1. So the Laplace transform of sine of t is simply 1 over s squared plus 1 squared, or 1. But because I have to take care of the fact that I really also had this time shift, where t instead of t we had t minus 1, that's the same thing as multiplying this by e to the negative s. So the u of t minus 1 is paired with that time shift and that results in the e to the negative s. Let's look at another example. Again in this case we're happy because the x minus 3 matches the u of x minus 3. So I'm going to instead just look at the Laplace transform of x. So I'm totally taking out the shifting, in this case I use x instead of t, but it's the same concept. But I'm going to make a note to myself that x really was x minus 3. So the Laplace transform of x, based on my table, is 1 over s squared. But now to take care of that shift, I'm going to multiply this by e to the negative 3s. Sometimes it's not that easy. Let's look at one example where it isn't quite that straightforward. What makes this not so straightforward? Well, the shift in u doesn't match what's happening to the function outside of the u. That is, I need to have an x minus 3 instead of simply that x in order to use that e to the negative a s shifting theorem. So what do I have to do to this? I have to force it into the form that I can handle. That's the form I want. Well, of course, I can't just do that. I'm also going to have to subtract out what I just added or in this case add what I just subtracted because if I did the distributive property here I would find that I had x u of x minus 3 minus 3 u of x minus 3 so I have to add 3 u x minus 3 in order to have it equal what I started. So now that I have that the Laplace transform of the first term 
I'm going to write as the Laplace transform of simply x, again noticing that x really was x minus 3, plus 3 times the Laplace transform of u of x minus 3. And that I have in my table. So the first term is 1 over s squared times e to the negative 3s. The 1 over s squared is because the Laplace transform of x is 1 over s squared. And the e to the negative 3s is because of the shift in x from x to x minus 3. Plus 3 times the Laplace transform of u of x minus 3. And for that I'm just going to use my table. And if I wanted to I could simply write this as such. And those are some examples of how to find Laplace transforms when we have a shift in the time or x domain.